I hope you love Halloween like I love Halloween. I am doing a couple of really easy DIYs, but they're cute and not so scary. So I hope you like that too. <laughs> Make sure to stay tuned to the end to see how cute they turned out. I picked up this already cute sign at the thrift store, but it was a little broken and I don't like the Paris theme. <laughs> and I thought it would be perfect for what I want to use it for for Halloween. So I'm just undoing the little screws that were left on here and taking it off so I can paint the front of it. So before I used this, I, I did wipe it down. Uh, before I started taking it off so just so you know I did clean it and then I'm just setting that metal piece up aside so I'm going to take this it's like an off-white reticket chalk paint that's similar to the color that's on it already So I went to my Silhouette Cameo and I printed this out and cut it and it is going to be just a stencil for me and I'm transferring it to the transfer tape. Never mind that it says Cricut, it was on sale. <laughs> Even though I have a Silhouette, but I'm just getting this transferred over so that I can line it up easy onto my project. So now I'm going to place it onto my project here and it was a little difficult because I cut it a little off so it was hard to see my uh, piece of metal that I was putting it on so that it would be straight. So I had to kind of keep looking at it and redoing it but I think I got it. I did speed this video up but you want to be very careful of peeling that transfer tape off because it can rip your vinyl. So now I'm just taking some black chalk paint and a small uh, stencil brush from Dollar Tree and I'm just filling in all the spaces with the black. I wanted to share with you that I now have a channel membership and there should be a join button below this video and you can click on that it will give you all the information and details but there's a lot of perks that are involved in it and I will hope would hope that you would join me and make this a fun adventure for all of us. So here I'm just slowly pulling up the uh, vinyl from my paint because I don't want that to come off and being careful how I'm doing it. And I had to take my gloves off because it was sticking. So just be gentle with this part as well and I'm using my tool to kind of pull it up as I go because it was starting to stick to the paint. But once you get it off, it looks so pretty. So now I'm going to take this ink and distress the sign. And I got some black paint there, and instead of taking it off, I left that um, it, as a part of the distressing, because you don't want it to look brand new for Salem. And I apologize for my bandage. I cut myself pretty bad the day before, and it took a while to stop bleeding. I thought I was gonna need stitches, but thank God I didn't. But I'm just going over this whole sign with this ink, and at first I was kind of like going to do the sides, but I ended up doing the whole thing. So now I'm taking some matte Mod Podge and just going over the top of this to protect it. I want to protect that uh, distressing more than anything because the paint will pretty much stay. I just don't want everything to rub off. So just want it to last for a little bit. So after I let it dry, I'm going to put it on back onto this frame and it is missing a few other screws. So I had to have some out of my little set that I have and added to the other two that were missing, but it worked out really well. 
So let me know what you think from Paris to Salem. <laughs> and I hope you like it better. I will show you how it looks on the wall later on in the video. For my next project, I um, am cutting the top of this box here, um, thinking that this cardboard piece would be big enough for the base of what I'm doing, but it ends up being too small. So I cut it all out and it was a good reference. <laughs> Once I get going, you'll see. So I grabbed a piece of this cardboard that I bought on Amazon to make those putts houses at Christmas or Christmas in July that I did. You'll have to check that video out. But I'm just taking it because it's easier to work with and making a cone shape out of it. And here's where I realized it was too small. <laughs> so I'm using that as a base and I'm just gonna cut a little bit bigger round circle and it does not have to be perfect for this. Actually, it's probably better to be a little bit um, off center just because of the nature of what I'm making. So now I'm taking a piece of um, packing tape and I am going to tape this cone so that it stays together instead of hot glue or anything because I wanted it to hold together nicely. And you can see here I was kind of struggling. <laughs> So then just previously to this, I had already tried this and burned my fingers pretty bad. As you can see, that foam was melted. And I'm trying to just get this craft done so that I can just take care of my fingers. <laughs> but you want to be very careful with your glue guns. I didn't realize it was on the high setting um, instead of the regular setting. And so I just want to hurry and make sure it was done. So I'm just making sure this is all glued down to that base and we're making a witch's hat. So I do want to let you know that this is not my idea, that I saw this idea on Instagram and I thought I could replicate it if not you know try to make it my own so I am taking some moss from the Dollar Tree and I am just gonna glue it all the way around the whole hat but before I get started I forgot I wanted to bend it so it looked like a witch's hat a little bit more and um, as I go along I end up bending it a little bit better and it ends up staying and I even elongate it too so it looks a little bit more pointy and I will just let you watch and see. I poked a hole in the bottom for a reason and you'll see in a little bit why I did that. So this is where I realized that it needed to be longer, but I didn't want to make a, a mess since I had already cleaned everything up. So I'm kind of trying to do it while I'm doing it in the bag so it catches all of the moss because it is pretty messy. And then I didn't realize, but later on, it's going to get even more messy. So I don't know why I've been bothered. So this is where I'm just kind of adding that extra piece on.
So now we're going to take a pot, a terracotta pot, and just, I'm going to kind of try to just almost dry brush it on so that it's not all over um, solid white, and then rubbing it off where I don't want it to be so dark. So I'm just going through and doing that with the white. It's actually not the white, it's that Retique It um, off-white chalk paint. So then I'm just getting a wet tissue and just wiping off the excess. So now I'm going to use some black to give it some dimension, but I originally thought the watered down paint would actually work better, but it didn't. So then I started using just the straight paint and dabbing here and there and then again rubbing it off. So I ended up putting too much black and then went back with the white and touched it up. So it's kind of giving it um, a few layers of dimension. So I put two of these foam discs, they're kind of like hockey puck size, into this pot and I glued them together and then now I'm just gluing more moss on top. See this is where it's getting messy again. <laughs> so I'm just putting that, making it look full and um, hang over everything. Later on I realized that it is not heavy enough of a bottom so I ended up having to take this up and put rocks inside to balance it out. So um, make sure to put rocks in first before you actually do all of this part. So then I went out to my yard and I found a couple of sticks and I found this one that looks like it would be perfect for it. I had to cut the the bottom off of it, but it was going to work perfectly. It's kind of hard to show you exactly what's going on here, but I had to measure where I want the hat to sit and how far down it would go to poke through the hat. So I had to cut the top part off and I ended up rearranging it because like I said, it was a little top heavy and you kind of have to maneuver with it so that it stays uh, in place and doesn't wobble around. So this is where it was a little top heavy. <laughs> and then I realized I needed some sticks. I needed to get some rocks after the sticks wouldn't work. So just maneuver with it and it ends up working out really well. And I, I do love it now that it's all finished. So then I'm going to make like a plant marker out of some old drop cloth material. And I created this on Canva and I'm just going to cut out all the way around it so that it is close to the edge. I forgot to mention that I printed it on sticker paper. So I'm just taking an iron and ironing that piece of fabric so that it's flat and then I'm going to take that backing off of the sticker and place it on the fabric. So now I'm taking some parchment paper to stick over my design and then I'm going to iron on that sticker so it sticks to the fabric really well. And these are cute if you're not going to wash anything and you're just using them for decor. And you should see my Christmas in July video where I made some Christmas ones and I'll have that link up above. So now I'm going to get that antique distressing ink and just color in all the white on the um, sticker and try to make it look old. And I even put it on the fabric too, all the way around. So 
So then I took that same thin cardboard and cut a piece and this is actually just an extra piece I had and it was a little too long. So I just want it to kind of show on around the edges but not all the way. And um, then I just rounded the edges of the cardboard. So then I'm just going to take some of that same Mod Podge from before and just glue it to the cardboard. You can pretty much use, I think, any kind of glue that is good for fabric and wood or cardboard. I think it would work. Then I'm just taking a skewer and measuring where I want it and then I'm just going to cut it down to size. Now I'm just going to take some hot glue and glue it to the cardboard and then put some masking tape over the top of it and I'm done. Then I'm going to get more of that distressing ink and tone down the color of the stick so it kind of blends with the more kind of used and worn looking. For my next project, I just thought it would be cute to make an old-fashioned picture, a black and white photo, and I printed this on Canva with a, a frame and everything, and then I even entered in the window there a little, if you can see, a little witch in the window. <laughs> so I thought it was cute so I could just sit it out in my decor. So I printed this on a sticky, um, the sticker paper again, and I'm just going to adhere it to one of those uh, pieces of cardboard again, the same size. And I'm trying to get it on as, as best I can straight and then I'm just gonna trim it because the old pictures weren't exact after you know they've been around for a while, they get torn, they get kind of messed up. So that's what I'm wanting this to look like. So then I'm just going to take it and kind of bend it and kind of scrunch it up a little bit so that it has some bending in it before I distress it. So now I'm just taking that distressing ink and I'm going to go over around all of it, all the white parts, and putting a little bit darker in some places just like old pictures would have and just trying my best to make it look like it's been sitting in someone's attic for a long time. So I think I succeeded with this because it turned out pretty awesome. And you'll see at the end of the video how I styled everything. So what do you think? Are they cute or spooky? I think they're more on the cute side and not too cute, but not too spooky either. <laughs> and I hope that you enjoyed this video. I had a lot of fun making these projects. And again, like I said, they were simple and not too difficult to create. And I hope that I inspire you to be creative for Halloween and create your own designs. 
as well as check out the thrift stores and there's always something that you can turn into something that you want for your home. I appreciate you making it this far in the video and I would hope that you would subscribe if you have not and please make sure to watch those other videos that I mentioned early on in this one. And don't forget to check out the link below for my channel membership. I would love to have you join my, my team and be a part of the excitement and help support me along the way. All of my proceeds will go towards getting more thrifted items and crafting supplies. So it would help my channel out a lot. If you enjoyed this video, you just might enjoy my Beetlejuice DIYs. The link will be coming up next. Just click it and you'll be watching Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice. I appreciate you so much and I hope you have a wonderful day.